Hello Nehru, good to see you. Uh, good morning, sir. Exactly the same feeling, sir. Great. Hi. Good to see you. And I can see all your tennis trophies in the background. <laughs> Great to see you also, sir. Yes, in fact, I had a very good set of tennis yesterday. Good, good, and good, sir. Yeah, yeah. I was feeling quite nice after a long time when I played. Okay, okay, sir. So That's very nice, very nice, very nice seeing you, sir. And uh, welcome back. Thank you. Always a pleasure. The academy and our students, they're eagerly looking forward to... No, no, no. I have seen in the last time I took the talk, your students are so interactive and so vibrant. One really enjoyed it, you know. Mm. I'm sure we'll have a good session today also because this is very close to us, you know. It's not only history. It's just history is taking place in front of our eyes now. Yes, it is a a world changer, yeah. It is a world changer. So, uh, students, today we have with us a uh, defense expert, a military historian, uh, Ajay Colonel Ajay. And uh, Ajay sir has written, uh, uh, has authored a lot of books, including India's battles from uh, Kurukshetra to Balakot. And uh, he is very in, uh, uh, in, into, very much into the research of the battlefields, strategies, logistics, uh, the philosophy and ideology of those battles. And uh, a lot of things that we can learn as uh, defense aspirants. Uh, he has he, uh, given uh, provided lectures to uh, institutions as well. So yes, he he knows the nitty-gritties of the battles. Uh, sir, thank you for uh, uh, coming here. Uh, okay, sir, we will give it to you. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I must thank Colonel Nehru and No Frills Academy for inviting me to give a talk to all of you. It is always such a pleasure to speak to a young, enthusiastic audience like all of you. And I remember last time we spoke, many of you spoke to me on the telephone thereafter. You were in touch with on the email. And uh, not only in this talk, but whatever little help I can give, please, it will be my pleasure to do so. Uh, Today, we are going to be speaking on a subject which is really important, I think, to all of us, the Russia-Ukraine war. As you all know, it is a war that has been going on since the 24th of February. Now, everyone thought he's going to finish off in two weeks, three weeks, but it's been eight months now, and there is no sign of it ending. And the way one looks at it. It can go on for, like the Second World War went on for four years. This war can go on for many years, for all we know. But let for you all to understand this war, you must start at the background. Why did this war take place? What led it off? How is it likely to end? And in the background, the background lies in the fact that both Russia and Ukraine were almost, since the 10th centuries, they have been joined. They were part of what they call the Kievan Rus Empire. Now, when USSR, the Soviet Union was there, Russia and Ukraine were the two biggest states of the Soviet Union. In fact, in the Second World War, most of the battles were fought inside Ukraine. The same names you see now, Kharkiv, Kiev, all these places, that's where all the battles were fought. The Ukrainians suffered the most in the war. But when the Soviet Union broke up in 1991, Russia, you can see this map, Russia became independent, Ukraine became independent. Now, when they became two independent nations, they were both very close to each other. Ukraine was more and more tilted was towards, it was tilted towards Russia. It was totally towards Russia. But and I said one thing I also want to say Russia had a kind of a big brother attitude towards it. But what happened with time? Gradually, Ukraine started moving towards the West, towards Europe. They wanted free control, they wanted more trade with the West. They wanted to entire sec- enter into security alliances with the West. Now, that is fine. A nation is independent. You can do what you like. The big problem began when 
in around 2014, Ukraine decided that they are going to shift completely away from Russia and join the European Union and also join NATO. Now, one thing you must remember, inside Ukraine, there are a lot of pro-Russians. In fact, 50% are Russian-speaking and they are pro-Russia. The other are pro-West. So, when Ukraine started that movement here, when the Ukraine started the movement to join Europe, a lot of riots broke out inside Ukraine. Some of whom who wanted to join Russia, some of them who wanted to keep, continue with the West. In those rioting, actually, Russia did a smart thing. Not a smart thing. Not a, uh, they encouraged the pro-Russian people to rebel against Ukraine. And the area to the east of Russia, which they call the Donbass. You can see it on the map, the extreme right. And below, which you can see marked in red, the area of the Crimea, in the Crimean Peninsula, there were a lot of pro-Russians there. Russia actually moved in and annexed to over that area. Crimea, they took over in 2014 itself. And they said, this is part of us. Now, in the east, that area they call the Donbass, there has been fighting going on between Ukrainians and Russians, and not sorry, beg your pardon, Ukraine and Russian sponsored separatists for eight years. So I would say what I want to bring out is the state of war in Ukraine has been there since 2014. The difference actually it, it became the difference came about in 1921, when Ukraine said, we want to join NATO. Now, can anybody tell me what is NATO and why is it so important in this war? Would any of the young... The North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Excellent, Abhishek. And what, is, what, the, uh, what does it do? What is the purpose of North Atlantic Treaty Organization? Well, their purpose is if any of the country, outer country, right. external force attack any of the 30 nations, right. then all the 30 nations will take action against that particular country. To say Thank you. Excellent. Very well put up. Now, NATO is a, a, what I rightly brought out, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It was started basically to counter the Soviet Union. And like you said, there are 30. Now, 32 two more members are going to join in after this. These 30 members, they say, okay, we are collective, we are forming a collective defense. Now, it means that all 30 nations can put troops and missiles of a member state, of a member. Now, NATO, after the Soviet Union broke up, actually should have it should have dissolved as well. Because it's no now the Soviet Union is no, no longer a threat. Instead, it continued expanding towards the east, towards Russia. Towards Russia, yeah. You can see that you got the map. One by one, can you see the, those states which are marked in red? One by one, NATO started getting all these states to join NATO. What does it mean? Uh, U.S. troops, U.S. missiles, NATO missiles, NATO troops are put on their soil and they're coming closer and closer to Russia. The Russians protested. They said, nah, it is not correct. And they were right. They were actually right in this. But now, when Ukraine decided to join, it means the NATO will have come right on the border of Russia. It was never touching Russia's borders so far. Let me put you, give, to give you an example, it is like China saying, we shall put our weapons and soldiers in Nepal. It is something which is a direct threat to India, which we will not accept. I mean, we won't go to war over it, but yes, we will take measures to make sure it doesn't come about. So when NATO, when Ukraine decided to join NATO, what Russia said was, you are going to withdraw, you are going to withdraw your application and NATO will give a formal writing may guarantee that Ukraine will never be allowed to join Russia, to join NATO. So you take a look at it. 
the reason of Putin was actually a right cause. There was nothing wrong in what he did. But now when they refused, you know, even NATO has played a very smart game. They had instigated Ukraine into fighting Russia. They're getting somebody else who's fighting for them. Now, when they don't happen, Russia started building up troops. Almost one lakh troops around the area of Ukrainian borders. This was first as a threat. For almost a year, this went on. In fact, it, the troop buildup began in March last year. He was hoping to build pressure. The pressure did not, they did not work. He built up alliances with China. And then finally, when all the talks failed, on 24th of February, 19, uh, 2022, at 5 in the morning, Russians attacked Ukraine from four directions. In the east, in the northeast, in the area of Kharkiv, their second largest city, in the south, in Crimea, to take over the entire coast and see the map. And in the north, in the direction of Kiev. Now, it was a, if you take a look at the map, it is a massive offensive. It's almost 2,400 kilometers that they have covered. Nobody expected actually such a large scale. Even people who are saying, okay, if he, for it, they thought they will not attack. They said, if he does attack, he'll make a small scale offensive, maybe in the east and in the south. But to attack all four, all sides of, of Ukraine was actually big, very big. Now, they came in from all four directions. And in the first days of, I mean, there were massive bombing that took place, a lot of attacks on the thing. And the first phase of the war, actually, the phase went towards, which was the, which was the area they were heading for first? The Donbass and... So they were, were they heading to Kiev? So for the Abhishek, for the Donbass came later. They didn't go to Donbass. The main, all they addressed all of them, but the main thrust went where? Kiev their capital city. And believe me that they almost captured Kiev. They were very close to it. On the first of the war, the paratroopers landed near the airport. It's called Antonov Airport, near 30 kilometers from Kiev. Had they captured it, you know, they would have entered Kiev and believe me, that within about two weeks, the war would have been over. But the Russians, the Ukrainians, they actually counterattacked very fast and they resisted very strongly. Even the leader, Zelensky, the kind of motivation he gave to his nation is commendable. The US told him, you know, when, they were, when the Russians were coming so close to Kyiv, they said, we will give you a helicopter to take you to, to safety. And he replied, I don't want a helicopter. I don't need a helicopter. I need ammunition. Send me ammunition instead. Now, because of such good leadership, the nation held on. Now, look at, look at Afghanistan. When the Taliban were coming close, what did president, the president do? Ghani. He put all his money in helicopters and ran along with the entire cabinet. What happened? In 24 hours, that city collapsed. Because unless your leadership is strong, nothing can continue. But yes, you have to commend Zelensky for his leadership and the Ukrainians for the determined battle in which they held back the Russians almost everywhere. Now, this is how all four thrust lines came in. Like I told you, the north in Kyiv, northeast in Kharkiv, east in the area of the Donbass, and in the south in the area of Crimea. Kyiv, like I brought up to you earlier, was the major thrust. But because that thrust could not progress around First week of March, the war began 24th February. On the first week of March, the Russians said we are withdrawing from Kyiv and going back to focus on the Donbass. That is the eastern region, eastern and the southern region. Now, when the Russians have moved from Kyiv, it was taken as a big victory for Ukraine. Honestly, it was not really a victory. 
the Russians withdrew because it was a sensible thing to do. They could have never captured a massive city like Kiev. But they had also managed to suck a lot of, they divert the Ukrainians away from the Donbass in the south. Now, the, this was the first phase of the war. You know, the thrust towards Kiev and the initial attacks. Now, I would say around the period of April to July or so came the second phase of the war. In the second phase of the war, the Russians started attacking along the south and the east. Can you all have, have a look at this map? Because unless you see the map, you don't understand the full picture. All the area marked in pink are the areas which have been captured by the Russians in these past four to five months. The area which is marked in uh, with lines, red lines, are the areas which they had already occupied in, 20, in 2014. Remember I told you when all the travel took they, they annexed it in 2014 itself. Now, most of the media does not tell you, look at this progress which they have made. Look at all these pink lines. Look at the whole area they've captured. What it does, the Western media does not tell you is that the U Russians have actually captured 20% of Ukraine. 20% of their territory, their richest territory is in their hands. It is the equivalent of an enemy taking Punjab, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and almost coming near Bombay. That is the area they have selected, taken. Now you see in the south, okay, you can see the black sea out here, no? and the entire area in pink, which is marked, the Russians have taken. So the Russians have also cut off Ukraine from the sea, their coast, all the ports they have captured. The one port is left as Odessa. And if they decided to capture that, what happens is Ukraine becomes completely landlocked. They cannot do any exports. They can import nothing. They'll be totally dependent on Russia. Maybe in the long run, that's what they want, right? Now, this second phase of the war, though the Russians advanced very slowly, but yes, they have taken huge area. Now, after they took over all this area, what did they do to annex it? Anybody? They, they conducted a referendum. Wonderful, Pratik. So they conducted a referendum. And what do you mean by a referendum? And what were the aims of this referendum? Sir, it is a general public consensus on whether right. they want to be under Russia's control or not. Very nice. Very nice. Now, you see, remember the area they covered, they, they occupied, I wouldn't say they had I mean, they occupied the right term, has got four oblasts, oblasts or states as in the provinces, as they call it. One in the east is Kherson, then is Zaporizhia, then is Donetsk, and then is Luhansk. You can see it on the map, because once you understand the map, you'll be able to get a clearer picture there. These four provinces, they held a referendum. It was, we all know it was a fake referendum, okay? And we said, do you want to join? Do you want to join Russia or not? And as for what they say, 93% voted to join Russia. Now, in this area, they say now this area is Russian area. If you want, if you attack it, you are attacking Russian territory. What does it mean? If you attack Russian territory, Russia is free to use nuclear weapons. This is one of the biggest implications of that referendum. The other thing is, in Crimea, in 2014, before they took it over, they had the same referendum in Crimea. Do you want to join Russia or not? And as per what they said, 98% voted to join Russia. That's why they've taken it over. Now, the world has not accepted it. but it is in their hands. It's in their control. They will do a similar thing here. This is what they're planning to do. Do a similar thing out here. Have a referendum say it's ours. And then let the world can put their sanctions and all that. But Baba, like this, we say in Hindi, that area will come under their control. 
Now, the Ukrainians will never accept, and they should not. It is incorrect that a nation is coming and taking over your territory for whatever reason. Now, they have been supported by NATO more than by USA. They have been given a lot of equipment because it suits NATO. You have got Russia, you got Ukraine to do your fighting to weaken Russia. And they are sitting back. It's a low cost option. Keep on giving them arms, aid, charate raho. And they do, they do the dirty work for them. Ukraine launched two counterattacks. Now, if you take a look at this map, can you see the area in blue, which I marked in blue? Right? Yes, sir. Yes. Right. And also in the south, which I marked in, no, that's actually greenish with circles around it. Can you see all this? Right. These are the areas which the Ukrainians have recaptured in the month of September, October. If you take a look at it, they have recaptured almost 6,000 square kilometers. It is not a bad achievement. It's a pretty good achievement. But it is not as big as it is made out to be. Because Russia is holding on to... Look at, look at the map in front of you again. The Russia is holding on to 6 lakh square kilometers. Of which the Ukrainians have recovered just 6,000 square kilometers. But what it means is that given enough weapons and aid, the Ukrainians can make life very difficult for the Russians and push them back to some extent. And today, that is around the 20th of October, we stand, what is happening? Russia has got military reverses. I won't say the defeat. Reverses in which they've been pushed back in the northeast, in the area, can you can see the green thing, and in the south, where I believe the Ukrainians are moving to that very important town of Kherson. If they capture it, it would be a big blow to the Russians. But remember, look at the map. Even if they do capture it, Russia is still holding on to about 5 lakh square kilometers of that, which is going to be difficult to remove from. Now, what is, we are now where? Around end October. What is going to be coming after this, which is going to affect the war? Anybody? Winter. Yes. Around December, first week December is when winter sets in there. Winter goes on till around March. Then it becomes worse. Because then you've got the spring thaw. The snow starts melting and movement is not possible. So around the period December to March, there will be very, I won't say no movement, but movement will be restricted and large scale offensives will be difficult. They can still do it, yes, but it will be difficult. So most armies like to fight at a time when the earth is better, the weather conditions are better. So now in these one month. I would say, say two months we have got more. What do you think can happen? How do you think the war could go? Will it stop? Will it end? Will it continue? What do you think could happen? I want somebody from amongst you students to put your mind to it and tell me. How do you see the war going? So uh, I so think that uh, the yes, war will continue but on a smaller scale. Up until the winter is over. Yes, so wonderful. So you see the war will continue, but it may on a small. That's nicely put. Okay, anybody else? So there will be a shortage of, obviously there are shortage of fuel and uh, other resources. Right. So war will should not be a, uh, take longer time. Because then job will train and the class seasons are also changing. Right. So okay, so very good. That's another good point Abhishek has brought out. The fact that you say because the shortage is coming, the war may stop. Yes. You know, both possibilities are likely. One is that uh, Russia will launch, say, I mean, I look at it this way. Russia can launch an attack to recapture the lost areas. The other is the Ukrainians may launch a deeper attack which captures more area. Now, it could lead to a negotiated settlement, as they say. The problem is negotiations are not possible because Russia says 
we will not give up this territory. Ukraine says we will only start talk after you vacate our territory. Ukraine is absolutely right in that. Now, if the territory cannot be vacated, it is like I said, there is a very strong likelihood that this war will continue maybe into winter, maybe next year or so. We never know. Unless something drastic takes place, which changes the course of the war. But remember, both sides are fatigued. Both sides have taken heavy casualties. So yes, there is world pressure also coming on to end the war. But how it pans out, the next few months are going to tell us. Now that you have understood how the war has happened so far, you almost follow it on a day-to-day -day basis, just to be interesting, yeah? just to see how the Ukraine advance have come, how the Russians like to follow, and things like this. Now, with this, there are two or three very important things. One is, with all these battles going on, war has come back to Europe after 70 years. But this time, it is under a strong nuclear shadow. There is a distinct possibility that nuclear weapons will be used in this war if it continues longer. Because, firstly, Russia has got, it's, Russia has got the world's largest nuclear stockpiles. And they've got about 2,000 tactical nuclear weapons. And they said, we'll use it in case you'll attack our territory, which is now all the areas they've occupied. So should NATO come into the war or should they really add more fuel to the fire? Russia may launch a small tactical nuclear device, which unfortunately will then go out of control. They'll be Ukraine cannot retaliate because it does not have any nuclear weapons of its own. It surrendered its nuclear weapons. But yes, the USA may retaliate on their behalf. And then the whole war press, I mean, NATO could come in, the entire war press. It is a distinct possibility. The also the thing is, like they say, if Putin feels he's going to lose, they said, okay, I have nothing to lose. Let me use nuclear weapons to stop the issue. It's what you call the escalate to de-escalate strategy. Now, all this war has touched the entire world. India is actually very affected by the war. And to be very honest, we have handled it beautifully. We really must admire the way our government and our foreign minister, Jay Shankar and Prime Minister Modi, have very categorically stated that first is Indian national interest. Russia has been a good friend, a very good friend. They have supported us. We are dependent upon them for arms. But yes, they have supported us at critical times. So we cannot abandon them just like that. Also, even though the USA has imposed sanctions upon Russia, India has continued to buy oil. We are continuing to buy wheat at good rates because it suits our country. We have not, we have abstained from any UN resolution condemning Russia. We call for peace, all right. But yes, I would say our stance is neutral, which is the way it should be. It is not our war. Let those guys handle it on their own. We will look after what is good for our country. And what is good for our country is trading with Russia, continuing having good ties with the Western world and with Russia. And maybe at a later juncture, use this nice position which we have got to perhaps broker some kind of peace, which I have a very strong feeling can come about. Because we are very well positioned for that. The other thing is, what will be the effect on the rest of the world? Well, like I said, this war is not just a Russia-Ukrainian war. It is not even a European war. Though Europe may get sucked into it. It has affected the entire world in the sense 
that now the world is formed into two camps. Russia can be, see, it is firstly to the US and the anti US camp. The USA is pushing the war. The Western nations are following them. Ukraine is being made to fight the war for them. But nations like China, Iran, North Korea, and Russia, they can form an axis which will be difficult to counter later on. To stop what they call, what they feel is US hegemony. Can it escalate into a World War III? Yes. There is a likelihood. Because if the war becomes a nuclear war, say NATO comes into the war for whatever reason, any NATO force, even by mistake, say a Russian aircraft is shot down by a NATO fighter, or a Russian missile lands in Poland, which is a NATO ally. Small mistakes lead to big consequences at times. Then if NATO comes in, it becomes a world war. Likely. No, neither, nobody wants it, but likely, yes. And both sides are already preparing the grounds for it. And more importantly than the strategic and the military aspects are the economic aspects. Today, the whole world is in a recession. The world, because Russia and Ukraine combined produce one third of the world's total grain exports. What has Russia done? They blocked the Ukraine. Like what did I told you about the sea? Ukraine exports going through Odessa. They blocked the ports and they only allowed the grain to pass after they made concessions to it. This has raised the price of food commodities across the world. And they say almost 500 million people in poor nations like Africa and Asia will suffer from food scarcity because of this. The other thing is energy. Russia provides, you know, the world's largest, besides the OPEC nation, besides the Arab nation, is the largest provider of gas and oil to the rest of the world. What has Russia done? There were sanctions imposed upon them. So they said, okay, you can't trade. They said, okay, no problem. They blocked their gas going to Germany and Europe. Now, blocking of the gas. We will not understand it because our winters are not so severe. Now, when a pipe, when you are, they have that pipeline, it's called the Nord Stream 2. When piped gas comes from one place to the other, the biggest advantage is it is cheap. There are virtually no transportation costs. To make up for this, USA, of course, said we will send you gas. Gas will come in tankers from USA, come to that is come to Europe to be given to them. It means it will take three times more, ta more time and cost thrice as much. So the energy squeeze, as they call it, can be applied across Europe. And how they are going to handle it in winter is what is going to be the interesting part. But yes, this war has, I put it this way, I very often compare this war with the First World War in the last century. It did not stop after four years. It continued on to the Second World War. It continued on the Cold War. It continued thereafter. It was a break of the Soviet Union. Similarly, this war has firstly started war in Europe. It is started conventional war, which people thought was behind us. And it will continue from Europe. It will expand, touch the world, touch virtually everybody. And as of now, we have no clear signs of how or when it could end. My only thing to each one of you would be follow this carefully. 
because firstly you are all in the field of military and security you are want to be you are want to join the army and the armed forces it is interesting it will give you a lot of insights which you can apply later and i will take on questions later but before i close let me show you a small video of an action which took place командир полка погиб по остальным разбираюсь сейчас как разберёшься всех соберёшь мне доложишь как понял оттуда били This, this was the attack of a Russian convoy, of Russian tank convoy, which came into Kharkiv. And actual footage of the war. Right. And with this, I thank you for your attention and I hope you've enjoyed it. I have deliberately given a lot of time for the students to ask me questions and clarify any doubts which or any input more than that, I'd like you all to contribute and share your inputs with the other students as well I'm at your disposal you can note down my email address and my telephone number and any information or any help I could give it'll be such a pleasure uh thank you sir thank you so much uh, one by one people unmute yourself and ask questions uh, regarding uh, the contact now details i'll take it from sir again sure. i'll leave yours uh, so yeah. that i can pass on to students so recently we have observed that uh, in pakistan uh, there have been high profile visits from the west especially right. germany and usa at uh, the pok and uh, so i want to know how uh, this comes out in this uh, russia ukraine dynamics and how does it affect india excellent very good very very good very good question vishnu well done now you see dekho one is pakistan has actually only only two things that have happened one is it has got off the fatf the financial action task force list it is no longer the gray list so it means it can get more aid the other thing is there have been a few statements made by the us pro pakistan in a way it is posturing the us is trying to tell us not to be so pro russia or, or rather to join the us camp or else they will prop up pakistan against us this is my reading of what i feel is happening out there but otherwise pakistan as a nation it has lost its strategic value right now i mean they are no longer in afghanistan they got no interest they are going through too much turmoil on their own their floods have virtually finished the economy so they will continue being a nuisance for india but these visits and all should be taken as just they they are just visits and they just gestures i don't think it will change the dynamics very much because india and us relations will continue and i think it's going to be stronger with time this war may not affect it so much as it would we are playing our cards well very well i would say good thank you sir so recently uh, we uh, we are hearing about the news that iran has provided drones to russia okay. and turkey was providing drones earlier to the ukraine and they are still okay. utilizing it now okay. we are also hearing the news that iranian soldiers are there in the very good Premium and fighting with Excellent. the Russian soldiers. So, how it gonna affect India now? Well, Lakshmi, I must compliment you for a superb question. Superb question. Yes. Now, the drones Turkey had provided the Beraktar drones, and uh, Iran has now provided the suicide drones, Shaheen, they call it. They have proved very effective. Now, the news of Iranian soldiers being in Crimea. i will take it with a pinch of salt it is very likely that there are mercenaries who are employed there remember russia is using a lot of mercenaries in this war there was a wagner group and others they could be using mercenaries from the is and different iranian sponsored group like the hezbollah and hamas and things like this but iran will provide equipment to russia they are well entitled to do so in any case they hate the usa as well 
but I don't think they are direct Iranian soldiers being involved in the war, not at this point at least. A very good observation. Okay, sir. So, sir, will uh, USA also provide machineries to the Ukraine if Russia is surprising them? They have given $60 billion of the equipment and aid to Ukraine, much more than they gave to Afghanistan. So they are nobody to comment on anybody else providing equipment to Russia. Okay, sir. So one more observation, like uh, this is little uh, away from the topic about the Taiwan issue, which is there. The so US is saying that uh, it will support Taiwan if military actions are taken by China by attacking the Taiwan. So will yeah. USA really take part in, <laughs> and will <laughs> India also, you know, provide support? Very, 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 very good question again. Now, USA is under a treaty with Taiwan in which, in case of an attack, USA will come to help it. That's what the treaty says. So, if that be the case, but will they do it? I have my doubts. They will not want to get involved in a war with China, which is so far and done concern any of them. The USA is very fond of backing out of the treaties whenever it suits them. So they make a lot of noise, they give a lot of equipment, but not get directly involved. They'll even send careers close to the area, but they'll not get directly involved. And will China attack Taiwan? A lot depends on this war. If Russia succeeds, China under Xi Jinping will be emboldened to attack it. They may be, not now, maybe two, three years in the, in the future. If they are, if Russia and defense pushed back, they may actually give a second thought. Well, or that will also strengthen the US alliance and they'll feel that the US alliance may act against them should they go to Taiwan as well. So what will India do in this case? Like India, India to one China China China. China. We should call for peace and keep a distance. We should, so we and we should protect, uh, no, 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 and we should protect the northern borders, Ladakh. That could be a testing ground for China. Yes, so, so India will protect its own territory. Yeah, That's you, have a, you know, national interest comes first. Forget, let China one and Taiwan, let USA and China blow themselves up. Really doesn't matter too much to me. What's happening in Russia, in Europe, also really doesn't matter so much to us, except for the fact that our imports are being affected. Mm -hmm. It is your country that comes first. And we should take measures with suit our country, which is what we are doing right now. Of course, not quite very nicely in this war. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, as, as we know that the USA did a lot of blunders in right. Afghanistan also and uh, right now in Ukraine also, because Ukraine should have joined the NATO in uh, long far ago, but uh, it couldn't. Right. And that is the reason uh, USA is sending weapons and arms and munitions to the Ukraine. And the situations are getting worse and worse right. day by day. And the dollars, right. dollars, 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 dollars uh, significance is also getting higher and higher for the right. other countries because the right. commodities and the fuel and prices are also getting rise. Right. So what is the purpose of doing so? And uh, after all, such a situation is getting worse day by day. There's no purpose of uh, for the US for US and Ukraine couldn't join the NATO. Yes, see, sir. See, I don't know. US has played their cards beautifully. They're getting Ukraine to do the dirty work for them. Ukraine's fighting a war for them. They're giving them equipment and they're weakening Russia, which they consider a threat. If Russian economy and gas and all, if, if it fails, US power increases. It is all a great game. But the problem is, in this great game, China is going to be the beneficiary because the world attention has moved away from Russia, from China, and moved towards Russia, which has become public enemy number one. Had the world concentrated towards China as the public enemy number one, yeah, and Ukraine and NATO focused on the Indo-Pacific as was happening before this war, that would have suited us better. Okay, sir. Sir, I want to ask that, has Ukraine become another Afghanistan? No, 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 no. See, Ukraine will, not, Ukraine will become devastated by war. Already they have lost $500 million, or, or, uh, $500 billion just to recover the damage out there. But no, it cannot, it won't become Afghanistan, but Ukraine will become a Donbass. What I mean by that is remember the Donbass region has been under conflict since 2014. Ukraine, all of Ukraine will be under conflict for a long time to come. Which will spin. But the, the, the Europeans will not get directly involved. They will let the fight continue in this manner. 
और सर हैज यूक्रेन बिकम अ टेस्टिंग ग्राउंड फॉर द वेपन्स ऑफ यूएसए ऑफकोर्स इट्स बिकम इट इज बिकम अ एडवर्टाइजमेंट फॉर रेथियोन पेट्रियोट जेवलिन मिसाइल्स एवरीथिंग एल्स Uh, it is often said that in this era of globalization and coupled economies it is quite impossible for another all out uh, nuclear war uh, going to happen no like remember i told you to, to you earlier on in case the war goes out of control in case russia is losing and they use a tactical nuclear weapon which is likely yeah then it will escalate uh, sir uh, on the similar lines uh, as you said that uh, america is not willing or will not involved in the china taiwan war if it happens like uh, we see now uh, russia ukraine war is happening and if it will continue uh, if russia becomes in more pressure so it will use a small tactical nuclear weapon so how bigger is the uh, uh, means probability right. of america directly involved when russia uses small tactical weapon nuclear weapon? they will not they will not get involved through nuclear weapons their response initially will be a conventional response they will impose a no fly zone and things like this but even that can lead russia to escalate even further because even the conventional response by nato they are so strong then that means russia will definitely lose so then they may escalate the issue okay sir and remember it won't be one nuclear strike it will be two or three nuclear bombs which come about don't be just one right okay gentlemen with this we will have to come to an end of today's talk i have really enjoyed speaking to all of you and it has been a really good question and answer which you have asked please do get in touch with me and any other clarifications i will share my videos and things like that with you which i really do hope will help my very best and good wishes to each one of you thank you very much thanks a lot ajay sir take thank care sir. happy diwali to your family <laughs> thank you and a thank happy you, sir. diwali to each one of you as well see you bye 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 sir bye bye sir take care sir